At last year's conference, ANCC awarded the Magnin Prize for a wonderful program designed to save very young lives. This year, they are invited back to present the program's achievements over the past 12 months. So please join with me in welcoming the 2016 ANCC Magnin Prize team from Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit. Too far. Too far. Hello, I'm Cherie Hunt, Senior Vice President of Patient Care Services and Chief Nursing Officer at Children's Mercy Kansas City. We are proud and honored to be with you today to present progress since receiving the ANCC Magnet Prize sponsored by Cerner in October of 2016 at the Magnet Hoff Conference in Orlando. Children's Mercy Kansas City is the only freestanding children's hospital between St. Louis and Denver, serving much of the state of Missouri and all of the state of Kansas. We employ approximately 3,000 nurses, including over 1,900 clinical nurses and 400 advanced practice registered nurses. We have two hospitals and five additional locations in the Kansas City metropolitan area as well as five outreach facilities across Missouri and Kansas. We are a level one trauma center and the only level four neonatal intensive care unit in the region. We have been recognized in all 10 specialties by US News and World Report for the last three years. Thank you. In 2016, our pediatric intensive care unit was recognized with the Beacon Silver Award. In fiscal year 17, we had over 14,000 inpatient admissions, nearly 600,000 ambulatory visits, and our critical care transport team completed over 5,000 5, transports, making them one of the busiest transport teams in the country. In 2003, Children's Mercy became the first hospital in Missouri or Kansas to receive magnet designation. We have continued. Thank you. We have continued our commitment to nursing excellence by achieving four consecutive magnet designations. At the 2016 Magnet Conference, the Champ program was recognized as the recipient of the prestigious ANCC Magnet Prize sponsored by Cerner. The CHAMP program integrates technology and high quality clinical care to improve outcomes for some of the tiniest and sickest patients. Through their innovative thinking and continual desire to improve patient outcomes, the CHAMP team has developed a nurse-driven program that drastically changes the way care is provided for these patients, improving not only survival, but their quality of life. I'm excited to share the work of our Heart Center and how the CHAMP team has taken this innovative program to the next level over the past 12 months. The impact of this program for kids across the country, it will reduce mortality. They know it will. My name is Amy Ricketts. I'm a fetal cardiac and CHAMP nurse coordinator. CHAMP stands for Cardiac High Acuity Monitoring Program. One in 100 babies are born with congenital heart disease. Of those 100 babies, typically 1% are born with complex single ventricle disease. CHAMP takes care of hypoplastic right ventricle and hypoplastic left ventricle. Both these lesions need a series of three palliative surgeries. A single ventricle heart has one pumping chamber, whereas a normal heart has two pumping chambers. That one pumping chamber is responsible to pump blood to both the lungs and the body, which can cause a lot of stress for the infant. 30 years ago, we would say that these kids would go home and die. Once a complex single ventricle is born, we watch them for a few days, make sure their lungs are ready to make sure they're ready, and then the surgeons perform surgery. After surgery, we call this the interstage period. The interstage period continues with monitoring until the second surgery. The interstage period is high risk. 
it is critical. And the chance of a single ventricle suddenly passing away in between the first and second surgery is 15%. Traditional home monitoring historically was a three ring binder. Parents were sent home with a SAT monitor, a scale, and a binder to record their infant's SATs, weights, and feeds. This was more of a reactionary model because parents would turn in their data and on Fridays we would review our list of patients and wait and call the families that hadn't returned in their data. We were missing red flags, finding out a single ventricle has lost weight three days in a row on a Friday was an ideal for our clinic. This single ventricle population are the underdogs. They have half a heart and I want them to thrive and be successful. What we needed was data to come to us in a more live setting so we could catch red flags. We sat down as a team and realized the binder was not good enough. We brainstormed. We wanted to be more innovative, use technology, and catch these red flags quicker. So the CHAMP app was born. That is a brief introduction to this high-risk population that inspired this innovative program. Dr. Amy Lay, pediatric cardiologist and the medical director of the CHAMP program, will expand on how the CHAMP clinical team and the app work at our hospital. Thanks, Sheree. At Children's Mercy, CHAMP has worked best with an interprofessional team of nurses and nurse practitioners as the frontline providers. Physicians, dietitians, and social workers are additional members for our thorough team approach with one of the most high-risk populations. Although we have had processes in place to take care of these patients at home, we knew we could improve safety and outcomes. Our Heart Center IT team collaborated with our administrative and clinical staff to refine and perfect innovative technology for seamless integration into clinical care. The CHAMP application is loaded onto a Surface tablet and is a key component of this program for parents to transfer data to our team. This provides a nearly real-time assessment of highly fragile population at home. This application takes data entered by the family, delivering it to our team, creating an instant network of support. The hemodynamic data entered into the tablet are possible predictors of critical adverse events. The data includes feeding intake, output, weight, oxygen saturations, heart rate, and videos of the infant. After the family enters data into the CHAMP tablet at home, the interprofessional operations of CHAMP begins. This tablet is secure, and only the CHAMP home monitoring app can be used. The data entered is sent to the CHAMP web portal over cellular service. This is uploaded within five minutes of the data being saved into the tablet. The web portal is encrypted cloud database that is secure. Real-time analytics process the data looking for anything outside of the normal range. For example, data from oxygen saturations checked at home that are too high and too low. Any data that is outside of the norm will be sent by an instant alert page or email to the CHAMP nurses and nurse practitioners. They then review the data and communicate quickly with families to triage potential life-threatening situations. The data from the web portal is available 24 hours a day to the interprofessional care team, including the daily output of secure data to the electronic medical record. The care team reviews data from a daily report summary on each patient. This data can be reviewed at any time from any secure device. The families also automatically receive a weekly summary of their child's data. You're about to see a family's perspective of the interstage period with CHAMP. Here's the Mason family story. My husband Mitch and I have two boys. Both boys were actually born with congenital heart defects. With Cohen, with our youngest, he was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. It's very scary taking home a single ventricle child. Someone born with half of a heart, but our CHAMP team was there for us and we were able to call and email and keep in touch with them and they kind of calmed my crazy a little bit. <laughs> my name is Brian Bevan and 
I am a nurse at Children's Mercy. I've worked for 12 years with cardiology patients. My role with CHAMP at the hospital is to really monitor our single ventricle patients when they're at home. I'm a front line for these families to call. I hold a phone that they can get a hold of a real person and help triage a situation. Part of that success is uh, developed with the introduction, the education that we've provided with them. We teach them the tools they use, which is a scale, an oxygen monitor, and our CHAMP app to communicate with us. We actually were inpatient for our Norwood. They brought everything up and showed us, you know, kind of how to use the tablet and the scale, and the SAP monitor is pretty self-explanatory. But whenever we took this equipment home, we had all this equipment at home, and it's like, oh, wow, now what do we do? Having the CHAMP team kind of at our right hand and anywhere, anytime we needed them, we could call them, we could email them. With the app, we sent them videos and they were, they were able to be there with us without actually being there. The CHAMP app enables us to assess patients with video, with vital signs, no matter where they're at. We have a large area geographically where patients are located and we can monitor them within the hospital. One thing we look for are just vital signs. We can look at trends and really monitor how well these kids are doing at home. The videos that we get to use are very powerful. It provides eyes on assessment while they're at home. The historical videos that we do get are also one of my favorite pieces of the technology because we can compare assessments from weeks ago, days ago, and then compare day to day to see if there's any, any changes. It's very valuable to watch trends as these babies start out pretty small and, and they grow and their vital signs change over time and we don't know exactly when they need intervention, but that helps us predict a little bit better. It kept us from having to run to the ER at every little thing because I'm that worried mom that every little hiccup and every little thing I probably would have ran him to the ER just because he's so fragile. For families at home, the value of having that type of communication or access to their, to their healthcare team, they've expressed to me it's invaluable. Their goal is to get home. They just want to be home. And so it's such a reward to be able to use technology and be on a team that enables that to happen. Historically, these patients have been in the hospital this entire time, this interstage period. And so this enables them to enjoy and have quality time at home and out of the hospital. And I think that's why we get into this profession is to take care of people. And this is one of the, the most meaningful ways I, I think and can see how to do that. <laughs>
As we embarked beyond our first pilot center in January of 16, we have learned a lot about the legal and research processes that come with a program like this. Since the fall of 2016, we have enrolled seven total U.S. pediatric cardiac surgery sites in the CHAMP registry. <clears throat> Thank you. There are six more that have reviewed and are working with their teams to see if there's, this is a project they want to embark on. It has not always been an easy task breaking new ground, but this progress has been amazing over the last year. The reach and impact of CHAMP multi-site registry for patients and families in the United States has been dramatic. Although only six additional centers have joined our team, this has reached families in 12 states, including three more soon to follow in Utah, Arkansas, and most recently Texas. This program, this program has worked for many hospitals like ours that treat more patients outside of the metropolitan area than within it. More than 41% of the CHAMP patients have lived farther than 100 miles from the care center when they are interstage. This distance can feel overwhelming for families and CHAMP can help to provide increased support and reassurance at home. As each new pediatric cardiac surgery site is enrolled in the CHAMP registry, they have their own clinical patients and care team models. As the coordinating site, we do not take all their clinical calls or parent concerns, but that data is not completely siloed, it's saved into a system. The data is saved into one large cloud that stores data safely and securely throughout the whole CHAMP registry. As the site managers at Children's Mercy, we can only see the de-identified aggregate data. But this design has opportunities for future research and knowledge about this rare but high-risk population. Reviewing this program internally and working with high-reliability experts, we saw that our program really followed a process of quality and continuous improvement. By having our own data readily available, especially after clinical events, we followed the principles of a high reliability team. We also worked to improve the integration of CHAMP guidelines to inpatient care. Additionally, we emphasize outcomes beyond just survival. This next video reviews the impact of CHAMP clinical program from the outpatient to inpatient and our use of high reliability principles. If you just say CHAMP to me, I think I would say decrease mortality, increase survival rates, improve outcomes, you know, improvement of the patient family experience. It's an innovative team, it's multidisciplinary, it's collaborative. It's really a dynamic team that is looking to pave the pathway for what care looks like for this patient population moving forward. They are a very vigilant, proactive team that focuses really on in improving care and improving outcomes of patients. My name is Megan Jensen. I'm a nurse practitioner in the Heart Center at Children's Mercy. I'm Lindsay Bradbury. I'm the nursing department director of the pediatric ICU here at Children's Mercy. CHAMP has really redesigned the collaborative aspect of care for these patients. So what we're doing for them outpatient has directly related to what we are now doing for them inpatient. Part of the challenges that we have had is that our, our PICU has been at peak capacity. And so really part of what the CHAMP program has allowed us to do is improve throughput through the system. So these patients come into us and they are no longer as sick as they used to be. It allows us to provide the care that they need and then to get them to the level of care that, that they still require, but it also allows us to make sure that we are meeting the needs of our community by allowing and opening up those beds for, for any patient in our community that may need us. They are going to pave what it looks like from a national perspective of how we care for these kids and how we keep these kids alive and, and allow them to, to go on and to do different things where their heart condition is absolutely a part of their life, but it doesn't control their life. The 24-hour call that we take is essential to this program. We would assume call about 5 or 5.30 when the day CHAMP team has left, and we troubleshoot any calls that come in via the instant alerts, via parent pages or concerns, and then we cover the whole time on weekends. I know I've heard the families say the comfort that they receive from that, and just knowing that they have direct and quick access. I mean, how many of us as parents have that kind of access to our providers? 
like none of us. And then to have a high-risk child as well, and I think it's essential and a really unique part of the CHAMP program that we provide to these parents of these extremely high-risk single ventricle patients. The wonderful thing that the CHAMP program and the CHAMP app has been able to do is creating a database of these patients and their care and their outcomes. So they can very quickly have access to an extensive database in order to look back and make really big process improvement, quality of care changes. And so I think that's gonna be just an enormous benefit to other institutions and hospitals that will use this, is just that it's providing them with a database of their single ventricle patients for which they can improve outcomes and look at their own processes and make their own improvements. From a high reliability standpoint, I feel like CHAMP is just the perfect embodiment of what a reliable program should be. When you look at high reliability, there's five principles that you look at, and they really are able to capture all five principles in, into their care. And it is truly a nurse-led program. The program has been built and allowed for it to be that, which I think is essential to the functioning and success that the program has had. Thank you. Training days, like the one you saw in the video with West Virginia Medicine University, have been enhanced by the funds from the ANCC Magnet Prize. Nurses and nurse practitioners from other sites can come to Children's Mercy to train on the use of CHAMP prior to implementation at their sites. This frontline training has been vital to the successful implementation in new sites. Coordinated and streamlined education has been enhanced through these visits to our center. Additionally, we have smooth multi-site communication as the nurse coordinators complete a quarterly update that is crucial for the maintenance and growth opportunities of nursing care and structure. We now have had 135 patients use CHAMP across the country. This has provided over 105,000 data points, including 6,000 videos. As compared to the 15% mortality in this high-risk population historically, mortality rates for the CHAMP registry have only been 3%. Children's Mercy went three years between deaths with our first CHAMP mortality occurring this spring. This information from the CHAMP database was stagnant and unknown before on the paper documentation at patients' homes. This is now an opportunity to learn from this rare population like never before. In the CHAMP multi-site registry, we see nurses as vital on the front line clinically as they are for research and data evaluation. Algorithms that instantly page have been advanced and improved with feedback from the frontline nurses and nurse practitioners. A good example is the paging for high oxygen saturations. We reviewed how many times the team was alerted to a level that was too high from our population at Children's Mercy. From that review, we evaluated how many alerts ended with an intervention versus just reassurance and review to the family. Adjusting the threshold slightly would have prevented 75 pages over a year's time. Now that we have made that change and reduced potential alarm fatigue, we also have a much happier overnight APRN call team. Since our presentation last year, there have been two publications, one manuscript under review, three published presented abstracts, three refereed presentations, and numerous invited lectures at local, regional, national, and the international level. The biggest opportunity that the Magnet Prize, oh, thank you. <clears throat> the biggest opportunity that the Magnet Prize gave us was to think outside of the box. We were able to expand when before we could only say, if only we had the funds. A few of the programs we're working on include an opportunity to securely text our families at home through the telemedicine department. Our Heart Center team has worked to make the CHAMP app platform agnostic, meaning it'll work on any device. Also, we are working with a new app that will provide families with daily developmental tools. Most recently, we are supporting the next year of the Heartbeats program at our institution to provide continued support for patients and their parents through significant interventions during their cardiac stay. 
A simple idea that led into something incredibly special is the milestone cards we made. Unlike typical parents of newborns who are anxious to celebrate their monthly growth, this high-risk population has achievements that document progress through their newborn care and trans transition home. For example, the removal of a nasogastric tube or getting milk for the first time. Lastly, as families transition off of our program after their second surgery, it is a difficult time for them. It was seen as an end to many and not as a new beginning. Now we can celebrate this day with a small graduation certificate, a book, and discussion of their developmental and family status with our social workers. We try and provide a smooth transition to their primary cardiologist and really celebrate all the places they will go. We want to again thank ANCC and Cerner for this opportunity. Through their generous support, we were able to continue the internal growth and also expand this program at the national levels beyond our expectations. As a result, we were able to reach so many more infants with complex congenital cardiac disease and their families. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori, and the entire team from Children's Mercy Hospital.